excuse me, 911? Yes, I'd like to report a crime. These fucking makeup brands want me to be excited about spring releases when it's not even Christmas yet and my ass is freezing. Could you, could you like send a police car or something? Hello? Hello? Hi, my name is Mia and this is my virtual vanity, a place where we both love makeup and we're quite critical of it. And I don't know if you saw my last bite or deny it, but I was... I wouldn't say complaining because I was actually relieved, but we were in a period of post Black Friday scarcity and there were only maybe 15 releases to talk about during that week. Well, the makeup industry has decided to put some nitro on and need for speed again with the releases. So now we've got close to 20 something things to talk about and not even individual items, but full blown on collections. As the year reaches its end, and the more I do this series, the more I am feeling a sense of being fed up. With all of the success of releases, it seems that they are releasing things just to release without doing any research into how this would fit their collection or which market this would target, which target market this would be useful to. More and more I feel that we have reached peak makeup, consumerism and releases are starting to blend into each other a lot. Another thing that I actually for real want to complain about is how dare they say that they are pre-releasing spring stuff or teasing spring collections when uh, fucking excuse me but it's not even Christmas yet. We are barely out of Thanksgiving. There is no spring outside to speak of in any hemisphere. What spring are you talking about? It's freezing, there's mud and snow outside. I am late to work because transport is fucked up by all of the slush and you're telling me that I should be excited for spring releases. No, 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 I refuse. You know, let's let's get to talking about the releases so I don't complain the whole video. I am uh, going to start doing the proper booty guru thing and look at trend mood and stuff I have saved on my phone. Actually follow a number of accounts and I save the items on my profile. Like, you know, the saved thingy with the ribbon so I can look at it later. Let's get started. So, Essence is being a decent brand and actually releasing a winter collection. I mean, at least someone knows which season we're still into, so props to them. We've got this winter collection, which is launching in January, February 2019. It's called Into the Snow Glow. And it has ridiculously long names, and I don't know when Essence started with these ridiculous names, but it's a fucking makeup product, not a novel. I don't need a long title to know what it is about. You just keep your product names to three words or less. That, that would be great. Like, if it takes longer for me to read the product name than it is to apply it, you're, you're doing something wrong got a new palette which is called oh baby it's cold outside which has eyeshadows and face products so we've got 14 shades of eyeshadow four blushes and six highlighters we've got hot chocolate and fuzzy socks sugar face glitter scrub and then hello winter glitter peel off mask can we can we stop it with the glitter you're killing the environment, one. Two, it's not good for your skin. 
It does look pretty, but it's seriously not good for your skin. Three, it's a gimmick. There is absolutely no proven benefit that, that glitter should have on skincare. So you are basically putting all of those glitters and micro glitters into our water system for nada. And then you're also hurting your skin, so could we not? I understand the reasoning behind it because glitter looks like freshly fallen snow or snowflakes dancing in the wind. I get it, it's pretty, but let's keep it to eyeshadows, lipsticks or to packaging and that, that, I think that would be great. And a blush brush, let it snow, eyeshadow brush and snow, snow, snow makeup bag. Do you think that if I say snow, snow, snow three times in the mirror like I would Bloody Mary, snow would appear? Or maybe disappear? Because if it does disappear, um, I'm all for it. I'm honestly not interested in anything from this collection. It's pretty. They've got their aesthetic on point, I'm not gonna lie. And the prices are sure to be affordable. However, that palette is huge. And I don't know how the quality is going to be for such a huge palette at low prices. And to be honest, I'm not a particular fan of Essence eyeshadow formula as is. To me, it's just mediocre. And I don't like their blushes or highlighters either. So that, that's a pass. NYX is completely confused about the state of the weather and... They are having early access to spring 2018 product launches. We have two off tropic 10 pan eyeshadow palettes. These are $20 each. I'm starting to have some issues with how NYX keeps pricing their bullshit because I get pricing limited edition palettes with amazing packaging $20 but this ain't it. This has this seems to have cardboard packaging and I'm not happy about paying $20 for a drugstore palette with cardboard packaging. Get over yourself. So these two palettes have warm neutrals with a pop of green which you know is, is a welcome change from the ever-present pop of blue and tropical brights. What I like about this tropical brights palette is that it's a rainbow palette with a twist. You've got neon sort of shades, fun sort of, sort of shades. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty. You've got the Can't Stop, One Stop Contour Concealer, $850, 24 shades. Can't Stop, Won't Stop. Setting powder, $12. This is going to be in six shades. Born to Glow Illuminating Powder, $15 each, four shades. A Bit Jelly Gel Illuminator, $15 each in three shades. I'm actually quite interested in this because I love cream, jelly, everything, especially in the winter. Glitter Gold Liquid Lipstick, $9 each. Candy Slick Glowy Lip Color, $6.5. And you've got four Petite Shadow Palettes, $7 each. Ash, Phoenix, Warm Neutrals, Brights. Ash is interesting because it's got some punkish sort of shades. I'd probably pick this up if I didn't have all of these shades in other palettes, but I really do like that it's a bit different from what we've seen in the market so far. But I'm I'm still I'm still pissed that they think it's spring. No, 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 no. Elf came out and they're available now with four new metal flare highlighters and luminous blushes. These are $6 each. You bet your ass are probably going to be double the price or even more in Romania because commercial markup is cure is fucking nuts. Um, incidentally, I'm going to post a being a makeup lover in Romania video very soon, so stay tuned for that. But I honestly think these are really pretty. I love the embossing of the on the highlighters 
and I think the blush shades are really pretty. I love that they have a very dark sort of blush shade and a very saturated one because it seems that these would work great on darker skin tones than mine or even like darker than medium tan which is always great. Now I feel like I'm getting a sense of deja vu, like I'm living again a groundhog sort of day situation with this new palette. This is the Silvia Gianni BH Cosmetics palette. This is coming out on December 5th and it's gonna retail for $24 and I can't help but think that it looks very similar to two other previous releases. And that is the ColourPop Perception palette, the one that was in collab with, I don't remember with whom. It's also quite similar to the Urban Decay Born to Run, but with two highlighters near it. It's also similar to that Sigma with Beauty Bird or whatever she was called palette. Do you see what I mean? when I said at the start that releases are starting to bleed into each other, like everybody's trying to come out with these huge palettes and they're trying to trick you that you get your value per money spent. But this is actually a prettily disguised trick because one, you do get a lot of value, but that's only if you don't have half of the shades already. And if you're a beauty lover, I assure you, you already have half of these shades already. Like you surely have the first two rows of that palette. You probably have a couple of shades from the last two rows either. You have highlighters that are quite similar to these two there. What I would like you to do when you see such a palette is to cover up the shades that you find most attractive. And when you do, look at the palette, the rest of the palette as a whole and think, do I still like this palette? Do I still want it? And if the answer is no, then your next step would be to search for colors that are similar to the ones in the palette, already in your collection, or buy a single if you find that one or two shades are just so unique that you need it. I mean, I don't know, yes, it's cheap, but it's going to take storage space and it's going to be products that you will never end up using up in a hundred years. In the end, it is your decision, but for me, mm, it's just not worth it. Get on to something a bit more um, recently controversial. So I'm starting to think that these makeup companies just cannot take a break from being problematic and at this rate I'm going to have to do my own eyeshadow out of glitter and grave dirt. Now Jared Blandino, the Too Faced CEO, recently posted a picture with his boyfriend. To me it seemed that it was his twin, they probably must have the same plastic surgeon, with a cake, an ugly fucking cake. Like you'd think the rich would have money to bake a better looking cake. But no matter, it doesn't like it, the look of the cake isn't what matters. But on the cake it was written, "Rich lives matter," which, you know, it's it's tone deaf. It's not. I wouldn't say it's outright racist, but it's at least insulting to a movement that had so much meaning behind it. And he did apologize. To me, that apology was good enough, but I wasn't the one who should accept the apology because I am not a black person. I am not even someone in America. But I still think that the whole ordeal was dumb and basically showed how much the upper class in America, the white upper class in America is completely out of touch with how to at least be sensitive to the issues that minorities face in in such a way that like it's it's probably the same in the rest of the world but i feel that even our political like even our corrupt politicians know to do better than that 
yet again from BH Cosmetics, they also released a palette that retails for $19.50 and it's called their Essential Mattes. This is obscenely large. A lot of the shades are very similar to each other. Not to mention that it's just what essential mattes. It's, it's a bunch of neutrals with more warm neutrals with two or three pops of cooler tones. These are not essential mattes. This is warm mattes with a few, few pops of color. And I absolutely have nothing against warm mattes. If that's what you like to wear, you know, you do you, boo. I love warm mattes. I love pinks, I love oranges, I love reds. Not gonna judge, because I'm the same. But I don't love them when they are repeated twice or thrice in very similar shades across the palette that you could basically use as a tray to eat your dinner on. Speaking of big palettes, Smashbox came out with a collection that is inspired by the LA skyline and it's got a couple of glosses, let's see, so you've got the Gloss Angeles gloss which I live for that pun, best, just best, and you've got several shades in $19, you've got this cover shot palette which retails for $45 and it has nine mattes and seven shimmers and it also includes a full-sized eyeliner you know if you don't have any makeup at all or if you have a very small collection I mean it's not that bad but something really cute and on the other side of the pricing spectrum Lancome is coming out with a marble balm and it's in three different colors and it has a beautiful beautiful marble pattern this is this is obscenely pretty and probably obscenely expensive as well it's coming around in january no price point yet i have a personal rule that i do not buy high-end lipstick because lipstick goes out particularly fast and I would probably just beat myself with a rod if I ever dropped, I don't know, $40 on a lipstick and then the lipstick would go bad. Or I would probably feel immensely guilty if I weren't using it every day. But these are absolutely gorgeous and I love their aesthetic and I cannot be mad at them. Speaking of lip products, Fenty is coming out with a new gloss balm. This time this is a shimmery pink, more of a frosty type of situation. It's called Fussy. And you do not want to know what I actually read it as. And just to, as a clue... It's also a name for a female cat. And I was like, Ooh, Rihanna is, uh, is being uh, daring. Uh, she listened into the nurse board meeting or the flesh board meeting and decided to uh, steal their names. I know this is a really pretty shade. I've not yet tried the gloss bomb. I do want to get the original gloss bomb in, when, when my December paycheck hits. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get this pink one because they do have pink glosses, but it is really pretty. Real a winter, a truly beautiful winter release. This one is for from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. This is their winter palette, and look at this. This is perfectly wintry. It's got green, it's got gold, it's got red, it's even got silver. It is so absolutely beautiful, and it drops on December the seventh. Oh, this is so pretty, but the pans look huge and huge pans give me anxiety. <laughs> I'll see if I still want it after the luster of the holidays passes. Like, I'm a complete Grinch. The only thing that I like about the holidays are tree, like Christmas tree candy, the bob makeup looks that everybody does, and maybe the winter makeup releases. Otherwise, I... Ugh. Winter, ugh, holidays, ugh, Christmas.
But I'm going to wait until the initial luster of this wears off and see if I still want it because right now I really fucking want it. Mac doesn't know which season we're in because it's been teasing a spring 2009 highlight powder which is going to be called Floor Real. This is a very pink, a cold pink shade that seems to be a bit iridescent, a bit leaning towards gold holo. I don't know quite how to describe it. I love the embossing. I would love nothing more than to use this every day until the embossing wears away because I absolutely love to destroy everything I touch. Mildly vague makeup news. Zara is coming out with their makeup collection and actually I'm quite interested in this because you can find pretty good gems at beauty collections done by clothing retailers. Like I've got a few nice things that I love from H&M Beauty. I've got a few blushes that I love from Bershka Beauty, which I think is now discontinued because they suck. They should have at least kept those blushes because they were amazing. So I'm interested to see if this reaches Romanian Zara's and to at least take a look at it. Blush Tribe is coming out with yet another palette. This is the Munasa. It's $32. One, the golden packaging is fucking ugly. Two, I don't like this at all. Like, I think th the arrangement of this is a mess. There are way too many similar shades. And I don't know, it just, it doesn't inspire me. It honestly looks like Skittles thrown on a table. And I dislike hating on a indie brand but if i'm gonna hate on big makeup brands you know well we we gotta have right equality across the board speaking of indie juvia's place has come out with the nubian mini palette which is honestly really pretty but i'm kind of disappointed that it's all neutrals like i really do want to uh, play with juvia's place shadows but as i said they're huge pans give me anxiety and I would have loved the mini palette with some of their colorful shades. Now, if you're a neutrals lover and you want to try their formula, why the hell not? But I, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna pass on this release in particular. Also, um why does why does nobody tell me that I literally look like the villain from Snow White because I literally sit like this to look at my phone? It's you guys are not my real friends. My real friends would have, would have told me to sit the fuck wow not even my real friends tell me to sit straight do i even have any friends never mind speaking of a person that doesn't have any friends or tries to have friends and invariably the friendship implodes jeffree star cosmetics is coming out with a new skin frost like a supreme frost pro highlighter palette and it's got six shades. I see blue, I see green, I see pink, I see purple, I see orange, I see gold. Have you ever had that moment when you say a word so much that it doesn't, it, like it stops being a word? That's how it, I feel after saying I see so many times. These retails for $54. I'm not going to pick this up because this is Jeffree Star. And for everybody new here, I'm ambivalent about Jeffree Star. I do not support him. Now, he may not be racist. He may really be sorry for all of the disgusting things that he said in the past. I can acknowledge that he has possibly changed. But I do not know him personally. I cannot vouch for him. I cannot vouch for his character. And because of that, I'm simply not gonna buy for him. I can still believe or at least hope that he is a changed man and that he's learned from his mistakes blah 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 but i'm not gonna buy from him also i was super mean with the earlier shade about him not having any friendships but um you you gotta admit he's got a track record and i'm not saying it's particular maybe, maybe it's not entirely his fault because um social climbers be social climbing you know but this, this video isn't entirely about Jeffree Star, so let's just uh, skip the next release. Irlan is coming with the Morning Love Collection. It has five lipsticks, one highlighter with a beautiful embossing, j'adore. 
and a dually used eyeshadow palette which can also be used for brows and I'm like Guerlain thinks that they have reinvented the wheel. Guess what? Any eyeshadow palette that you have that has a, an eyeshadow shade that matches your eyebrows, it's also dual use. I did my eyebrows for ages with a brown eyeshadow from Melchior. It's, it's really nothing new and you don't need to pay Guerlain price, prices for that. Makeup Revolution, I used to love them so much, but I'm finding myself more and more bored with their releases. They come out with this huge palette that retails for $15 and it's called the Creative Volume 1. I find this boring for two reasons. One, this is mostly neutral shades. If you cover all of the neon or colorful, you know, shades, you will find that 65% of this palette is entirely neutrals. Two, they came out with one of their um, $5 eyeshadow palettes and that is only shimmery brights. They also have other palettes, other colorful palettes with a much more curated color story. A few interesting ones that I can think of from the top of my head are the Mermaid's Heart palette or the Unicorn's Heart, the Dragon's Heart, the Revolution Pro line. They have a few with shimmers and mattes, a few with only mattes. Like they have got plenty of colorful palettes that are much more interesting than this. This, this seems just a release, another release to meet their weekly release quota. Boring AF. Sparrow Cosmetics, another indie brand that I've had forever on my wish list because they have a Lord of Rings inspired palette and I need it in my life, has come out with a Power of Five collection that is inspired by Girl Power or the Spice Girls. And they keep doing stuff like this, like this is nothing new for them. They uh, have other collections referencing pop culture. I find this to be really, really pretty, but in essence, a rainbow palette with glitters. I'll have to see a swatch of this, but I, I like it. In essence, I kind of like it, no lie. It's a rainbow palette, but I like it. Red and Wild came out with four of their new tan pan eyeshadow palettes and They've been really, really cheeky because they've duped uh, a lot of uh, stuff with it. So basically, there's this purple palette that perfectly dupes some shades in Natasha Denona, Lila, and a lot of shades in the... Um, whatchamacallit, Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina palette. You've got one that has a row of neutrals and a row of brights which um, fits perfectly the Natasha Denona the Tropical palette. Then you've got one that reminds me of the Anastasia Beverly Hills Prism palette without that pop of acid yellow. Then there's another one that dupes the Soft Glam. The pictures that I'm going to put up here are taken by Bew Addiction on Instagram. Two sneak peeks of future items. We've got the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Concealer, which is... This shade range is shameful. It is absolutely horrendous. Like, would it, would it have killed them to add two more shades that were darker than that that one like medium brown seriously on the other hand the benefit created darker shades of the hula bronzers which is uh, good news and they're going to come out in spring as well things this have been all of the new releases and the spring sneak peeks and everything that I thought worth mentioning or interesting from this week. I'm curious to hear what are you guys more ex most excited about? What do you want to pick out? Are you also as pissed that these brands seem to, 
seem to think that the birds are singing and heralding the arrival of spring when it's um, completely not the case. Let me know, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Don't forget that I post these every Wednesday at the latest on Thursday morning if I don't have to, time to edit. I hope I'll see you the next time. In case you're curious about this look, I did film it. It's going to be in my Nabla Poison Garden Palette 3 Looks 1 Palette video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye!